So this is a 10. This is sine 60, cos 60. Yes, this is correct. Okay. And then you have minus. Now, omega squared, we know. Okay. So this is 1 squared. Okay. And then RB dot uh, RB. So this will be if I can move this across. So this will be 10 cos 60i minus by 10 sine 60j. Okay. So from here, minus 7j. Are we okay? Did I make any mistake? You okay? So I'm going to plus again alpha k cross 10 cos 60. 5i minus by sine 60 times 10, 8.66j minus by, this is 1, so this will be equal to five I minus minus plus eight point six six J. So this is a uh, can you see what is going on down here? This term over here. This is uh, just a direct magnitude multiplication. Are we clear? Yes. <laughs> Omega over here only has to be taken as a magnitude. It's not a vector anymore. Okay. So you just do a straight multiplication into it. Okay. So from here, we, we have what? From here, we do our vector multiplication. So this is equal to minus 7j, k cross i, k cross i is positive, plus by 5 alpha j, okay. k cross j is negative, and you got negative, positive, 8.66 alpha i, okay. then you have minus 5i, plus by 8.66j. Okay. So if we were to look on a j component first, you have zero, right? Because we don't have j. You have minus seven over here. You have plus five alpha over here. And then you have plus, Eight point what? Eight point six six. Let me let me do this again. So you have minus seven plus five. So k cross i. Yep, plus five alpha in a in a in a, in a anti clockwise direction. Okay. So this will be equal to zero minus seven. So minus seven plus eight point six six is equal to 1.66 plus by 5 alpha. 5 alpha is equal to minus 1.66. Alpha is equal to 1.66 divided by 5. So it's equal to minus 0 0.332 radians per second squared. Let me check. So minus 7 plus 8.66. Positive bring over. Okay. Now, the minus down here means one thing. This alpha is in this direction. Okay, so the assumed direction, let, let, let me be clear first, okay, let, let me, because it's gonna affect your term test tomorrow. Is it tomorrow? No, Wednesday. Ooh, something like Eugene is scaring the crap out of us. 
Remember, we make the assumption that alpha is in this direction. Right? And we have, we have proven in vector form that this is what? Minus sign, right? By analyzing the J component. When that's the case, right? What happens? So this is what we assume initially. Okay. So for this case, we assume wrong because it's negative. The correct direction is what? Alpha is in this direction. Okay. So our alpha, if you were to write this down, this is equal to 0 0.332 radians per second, and the correct direction is coming down this way. Are we clear? Okay. So finally, we look into our I component. So I component, we have A, B, uh, T. So in the I component, we have what? Uh, 8.66 alpha. 8.66 alpha minus 5. 8.66 minus 5. So when that's the case, the 8.66, you have to include the minus 0 0.1 and then minus 5. Okay. So this will be equal to 8.66 times 0.332 minus 2.8. 875 minus 5, this will be equal to 8, 2.875 minus plus 5. 7.875 feet per second squared. So again, we assume that the acceleration is going this way, right? So this is our acceleration that we assume. And our acceleration is assumed wrong. It has to be coming back, okay? Because this is minus over here. So this is the wrong direction, the right direction with 7.875 feet per second squared. And it's coming towards the left-hand side. Are we clear? Okay. Okay, we look at the next question. Now, the next question, so this question is straightforward because we don't have what? It's linear motion, okay? So the next question that we're going to look at, it's not going to be just linear, okay? Okay, so we are given a rack and pinion system. So what we are given is the rack on the left-hand side. So this is known as a, as a, a, a rack. And this is our gear. Not rack and pinion, a rack and gear, okay. So we are given that our rack, sometimes it's also called opinion, okay? So we have a left rack, and then we have a right rack. On the left, it's moving at two feet per second squared, and the velocity of six feet per second. On the right, the rack is moving at three feet per second squared, and the velocity of two feet per second, okay? First, we are going to draw the velocity diagram or, or, or the velocity component, okay? So we know and this has to be big deliberately. Okay. So in terms of velocity,
we know that this V is moving at 6J. Okay. And I'm going to, and given to us, this is our point A. Given to us, this is our point B. And I would like to label this as point C. And I would like to label this as point D. Okay. And then we are also given that based on velocity, This is coming down at V. So I'll call this V at point C. And V at point D is coming down at two feet per second. And this is in our J. Okay. Now, if we're gonna guess, Okay, an intelligent guess how omega, uh, the the wheel is the gear, the pinion gear is spinning. My guess is is going to be in this direction. So this is our omega a. Okay, that is our direction that is going to spin. Why? Because how do I know it's going at that direction? Because I'm I'm comparing relative what velocity. Are we clear? Where there's two, where the, on V A, uh, sorry, V D is two, V C is six. Okay, so omega A has to be rotating in that direction. Now the next thing I'm going to sketch is the acceleration. Okay, and I have to do this in two separate diagrams. Okay, so now it gets messy. Okay, so over here, this is our point A, over here, point B. And we know we have a what? We have acceleration at point A. Or point C, this is our point C, and this is our tangential, and our tangential is going at where? It's going at two feet per second squared, or two j. Okay, now over this side we also have a what? A normal. Okay, so this will be. A section of C I in the I direction and it's going to be what? Positive. Then likewise on the other side at our point D, right? At our point D, we have A acceleration D tangent, and this is equal to what? 3J minus 3J feet per second squared. Then at point D, we have a what? A negative acceleration at point D that is normal in the I direction. Okay. Why we have that? Because at point C and point D, we have a what? Rotational direction. Are we clear? There's no, uh, we have a rotation direction going on now on the what? On the gear. Okay. I'll see you guys on my oh before I I, I I let you go. If we have a number that is 314.71241. Oh uh, no, 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 no. Let, 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 let me do this. If we have a zero point, this is important for your term test. When I say six significant figure, what does it mean? Anyone? Can you remember when I say six significant finger, what does it mean? Figure, not finger. <laughs> what does it mean? Anyone? So you have to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, nine is maybe too much. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so one, two, three, 
four, five, six. So, wait, one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's equal to 31.714. One, two, three, four, five, six times 10 to the power of minus six. Are we clear? This is what we call six significant figure because there's one question. If you use three decimal point, we are dead. All your answer will be wrong. Okay. I'm not telling you what's the question, but you have to take note. So there's one question. When I say six significant figure, you have to know. I'll see you guys on Wednesday.